Yo guys, 650 Friday. Is it Friday? It's Friday. It's Friday. And uh, hey, we're going to wait for some people to join in here. Oh yeah. Good to see you guys. Matt, are you, you're back. I can't believe it. Who's paying you to come on here? Uh, is that somebody who knows Paul Perdome there with the last name Paul Perdome? Uh, we have Paul Perdome on the show tonight, but I just wanted to, while we welcome everybody, check out the garden right now. It's just going off. This is uh, be beautiful British Columbia. And uh, this is, uh, you know, my father passed away a couple of years ago, but this is a rose bush that we uh, that was given to me. And uh, here we got some uh, blueberries and raspberries, I think. And then here's another. This is a butterfly plant also given to me from somebody uh, for my father. And uh, yeah, look at, hey, hey, Matt, you're not the only designer. Check out this garden I designed. Not bad. Not bad at all, eh? And uh, dude, look at these tulips. So sick. I think Paul Prudhomme just... Uh, I'll give you a little taste of what we're going to see tonight. Check out this bad boy right here. All right, I'm going to move over. Wilson Pruitt, dude, good to see you. I hope you're doing well. Uh, the most important thing that I'm going to do tonight, other than talk to Paul, is crack this beer. Simon gave me this beer. He sent me a bunch of beers. I don't even know where this is from. Le Castor. Must be good. And uh, so we're going to have Paul Prudhomme on the show tonight. I'm going to invite him on now and he's going to click in. I hope everybody's doing well. Let's, uh, if you're drinking a beer, cheers. Bam, cheers. Oh, I don't know where it's made or whatever, but it is good. I see you there, Simon. Thank you. This is a, this is a, uh, this is a good one, buddy. Uh, Paul Prudhomme, you, um, we did a couple of tests. I know some people jumped on. That's my new home in the background there. That's a little uh, tiny home. As you know, the real estate prices in uh, BC are pretty high. So that's that gets you about uh, 3000 to 4000 revenue a month, that little house there. No windows. I mean, it has windows. They, you can, you know, it's a little breezy, put it that way. And uh, Steph and Jasmine there, nice to see you. Pat, way to go. Thanks for joining you guys. This is awesome. And uh, we're just waiting for Paul Prudhomme to jump in here. Hey, Paul, are you going to jump on or uh, I think I got to, do I have to find you and then bring you in? And uh, let's see, uh, do, 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 I just got to find him. Paul, if you uh, maybe jump off and then jump right back on and you'll pop up. There he is. Let's see if I can get Paul. Uh, boom. No, I want, I want to invite you on, buddy. I want to invite you on. Go live. Let's see if he gets that. There we go. In here. Nobody just wants me on the show. I have guests. Hey, Dave. There it is. Hey, how are you? I'm awesome. How are you? Well, dude, you look awesome. I like what you did. Is that, are you in the back? Uh, are you in the backyard there? In the backyard, outside. You know, we like to ride all these toys and everything. So you might, it's better being outside than inside. I. I love it. Me too. And it's a little, it's your three hours ahead, uh, ahead. So it's nine fifty there. Correct. Yep. Awesome. Well, Hey Paul, first of all, I want to welcome you to the show. Please tell us what your title is. Everybody likes to have a title. I have, I never have any titles. I, my title is, Hey, you get me this. And then I usually run and get you a coffee, but you have a better title than me. What's that? Well, I was just thinking my, my main title is the idea guy coming up with new ideas all the time. But <laughs> uh, basically, I'm the product manager for ski and Can-Am on-road accessories, parts and accessories. So uh, anything to do with, uh, you know, all of the new product that we're, uh, we're always working on and coming out with. Awesome. So, hey, before we start, I want to show you something because you, you're a cool guy and you love cool stuff. And I know Matt uh, Tandrup is on there too. He likes cool stuff. Check out my new, this is my new, you know, when you, when you have a kid, you get a minivan. I didn't want to get a minivan. So this is, check this thing out. This is uh, a Benno pedal assist e-bike. Awesome. 
so my my daughter like she always rides my other e-bike up here there's a little seat from south africa that my buddy buddy brings in and then as you can see now she likes going on the here's the rear rack so you'll like this because this bike comes with a rear rack but that's an accessory and then the rails on the back are an accessory and then the pads on the back on the rail are an accessory and the panniers are an accessory and the pads that you sit on are an accessory and today was her maiden voyage and we went i had her bike on the back and then her on the front and then i put her bike outside the rack and she sat there and before i knew it she was riding backwards <laughs> that's cool you got a lot of accessories on there already yeah, so I thought you'd like that because you're the king of accessories. So this thing is unbelievable. It has a 240, a 250 watt um, motor and a 500 watt battery. So even this bike is, it looks like it would be super heavy, but they, it's like a, it's basically aluminum and super light. And man, does it haul! So cool. it's my grocery getter. Yeah, you're just all you're missing there uh, is a link system on it. You'd be all set. Well, we'll hey, we'll we'll get we'll get to that, buddy. We'll get to that. So I want to tell everybody a little bit about uh, Paul. How I've come to know him is because he's always been uh, in the parts and accessories, and and we're always begging for more parts and accessories, as you do. Uh, everybody wants, so he always gets the call. But um, this has nothing to do with that. Paul is one of those guys. You know, you always have a guy at the party where you, someone like me says a really bad idea. It's actually a good idea. And nobody else wants to do it, but Paul will sort of, he'll look and say, we shouldn't do this. But then he'll, he'll actually know a better way to do it that'll even be uh, crazier. And so he's kind of that guy that has that look that he knows we shouldn't do it, but we're going to then do it. And then we do it and it's even better, right? Because I, were you a part of that, uh, one year there was a sea do in a hotel room at a club. <laughs> uh, I wasn't part of it. I, I kind of know the people and the dealers that were involved in it, uh, which I can't mention, but I, I was definitely there. But uh, yeah, there somehow there ended up being a sea do that was in the pool and ended up in, uh, I think it was a, one of the president's uh, bedrooms on his bed. So <laughs> it, was, uh, it, was a, it was a good dealer meeting for sure. Yeah, one of the things that we we talked a little bit about it is the the uh, the DNA of BRP has always been a very hardworking uh, work ethic, which which has never left. And I think everybody work that works there, it's I'm just extremely honored when I see people who work there and meet there because I know how hard they have worked to get to their position and their job and what they do. But on the equal side of that, they love to party as hard and. <laughs> I, I remember going to a first few events or club and I would be like, we, we'd be done at six or seven. We'd go somewhere cool for dinner, finish dinner by 30. And then we're off to the bar. And anybody who knows bars don't really kick in now almost till midnight, but small, a lot of times it was 10 o'clock. But because we were such a big group, we'd go into the bar. We'd have, everybody would have drinks out on the dance floor and we'd do three hours of hard dancing and craziness. And then we're all back in bed at 11, ready to hit, hit it, get ready at six o'clock again. Yeah, no, there's a, there's a real work hard, play hard mentality. That's for sure. So, yeah. Uh, and that's, you know, if, go ahead. Sorry, you go ahead. No, no, no. I was just going to say whether it's at a dealer meeting or, or uh, getting out there and riding the product too. Uh, you know, we, we all enjoy riding the product and, uh, uh, it gets very, you know, even com competitive amongst all of us, too. So we have a lot of fun uh, at, at, in the evenings after the work hours. Yeah, I think that's what, you know, is my favorite part. I've always been that way. Like when I was racing, you know, for my job, I, I was just like, it's nonstop. You're training all the time. But then, you know, and, and you go to bed early and whatever. But then after a race, it was like, it was like the, the world might end tomorrow. So I better, I better hang from that chandelier upside down. <laughs> Yeah, I've seen a few of you, uh, see, seen a few of uh, the pictures of you uh, at what was it, Grizzly Lodge, upside down with your sled going. So it yeah, looks like you were playing hard. Yeah, I'll just say this: we're, we're lucky we don't talk about Wilson Pruitt when we talk about the after party because he's. I've got I've got a few stories for that guy when we have him on. Yeah, I've seen him in action. <laughs> so, what is your favorite 
thing about testing with oh hey it's seven oh, o'clock cheers, you know, cheers by the way yeah yeah cheers you know what we do at seven o'clock rev for support so now i'm because i'm not out front ready to light up my sled and this e-bike absolutely makes zero noise uh <laughs> my daughter was allowing me again to use uh this because it was you so yeah. if you know this is a glockenspiel and a piano in one <laughs> So we'll make some noise, rep for support. I don't know if what you have in the backyard, you, you must have something that lights on fire or makes a lot of noise. No, unfortunately right here, I don't have anything like that. But uh, <laughs> if, we were, if the garage was a little closer, I could light some things up for sure. Well, uh, let, me, let me throw a few tunes. Hey, uh, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna run out as we go to the, to the, to the front. Cause the fire, the fire brigade is here. <laughs> Watch this. Dude, you're going to love This is like frontline workers. Look at them right here. They're right here. Wow. There you go. These guys are just partying. You know, this is like what we do on our street. I think these probably these people know them. And so they're the... Here they go. They came well, just for you, didn't they? Yeah, they, they, uh, they're not that fast because I can <laughs> run right beside them. But, yeah, they're, so every night at 7, people, uh, we do ref for support for all the frontline health workers, people, essential services, all that sort of stuff. And yeah. uh, I think it's, it's super cool. It gets everybody fired up. And uh, it's cool to see the fire department, obviously, at the hospital. Every night, fire department, police, ambulance, they're all running around. But yeah. uh, I guess tonight they decided to, to hit the streets, which is yeah, cool. Well, that's, that's cool. It's, it's nice to see them out and get everyone uh, kind of cheered up a little bit. Yeah, and I want to thank all the people, all the riders out there, regardless of brand, uh, Skidoo, um, the Can-Am, all that, for uh, sending in your videos for Rev for Support. And um, keep sending them in, tag us, and we'll keep sharing them. I think it's super important and gets people uh, fired up. So yep. um, let's get into parts and accessories. People, I will say this online now, people love them, love them and hate them. They, uh, you know, I, I deal with the, the people that say, hey, you took away the snow flap and now you're selling it back to us. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, it, it's, I, again, I live on both sides. So I, so I love parts and accessories just because, I mean, it's a way to make your sled your very own and see the different things. And also... You know, people, I think it's much better way because people get to choose what they need. Some people need things in certain areas and then some people don't need them in other areas. So essentially, you're giving the, op you're making the, the, the product as cheap as possible, inexpensive as possible for the consumer. And then they can add those things that they need, whether they believe they need them or they don't. Yeah, exactly. You know, everyone's, uh, everyone's area by which they ride in or how they want to personalize the vehicle uh, to meet their needs or you know, from a, even from a customar, customization point of view, their own flair. Uh, you know, the accessories obviously uh, gives the customer the, the ability to do that. Exactly. Now, uh, what's your favorite part about working in parts and accessories? Because it's a, it's a massive job. Like, uh, we'll get into the, how many accessories there are and all that sort of thing. But what is your favorite? What do you love about it? Uh, there, well, there's a, there's a lot of things that I love about it. It's... Uh, uh, you know, the, uh, I, I think the cool thing is, is, is really working with the design and engineering departments and kind of, you know, like you, you alluded to earlier that, that, that maybe that silly idea, or maybe there's something out there that's a, say a frustration to you, uh, when you're riding, you know, something you're not happy with. And it's, it's really understanding or harnessing those ideas and then taking them back and seeing if we can come up with a solution that's going to, you know, uh, end up ultimately be, becoming an accessory that's going to help you out. And, and really working with the, the engineering and design department to, 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 to take nothing and figure out something. And, and then to see the reaction after, uh, you know, from the consumer, like, wow, how did you guys think of that? Uh, you know, introducing a lot of the stuff is really one of the real cool parts, too, for me, just seeing the reactions. Yeah. What let's let's what has been your favorite accessory? Let's say for Ski Doo. 
<laughs> I don't yeah, know if I have a favorite. It, there, there's a lot. You know, I, uh, you know, I think this year, if we talk this year, I think E-Link is, is one of the coolest things. You know, anyone who, uh, uh, you know, more on a Flatlander situation, but anyone who's wearing a, an electric visor helmet uh, over the years, trying to manage that extra cord uh, has always been a pain. And now to have it combined with the desk cord, you don't have to worry about anything. Uh, it just plugs in with your desk cord. If you fall off, you fall off. You're not going to wreck the cord. Um, it's just it's so much nicer to ride. It's actually like you're no longer riding with an electric uh, electric helmet. So that this year is, is probably one of my coolest uh, or favorite accessories. Um, a, a product that I'm very proud of, which isn't an accessory, but when I had the clothing group, a few years ago was uh, the, the entire development of the oxygen helmet. Uh, that was that was really really cool, and the the whole process on how we started it, and and the test group that we had in the field, undercover validating it before we even introduced it, and and you know fixing different irritants and stuff along the way, and then coming out with the product that we did was was a lot of fun. Yeah, look, take us through that process. Like the oxygen helmet is is it is third year you know it's in it's in the third year now i gotta watch because i've had it for six i've worn it for six years <laughs> uh, right but it's now yeah now it's now it's been out for this will be the third the third model year for it yeah and for some of the mountain riders who aren't don't know the oxygen helmet is is essentially a trail helmet and it has a heated visor and it's got it's lights up and so there is a cord a power cord for it and now this year when, when Paul was talking about the E-Link, that power cord, it, you, you'd have two cords. You'd have one for the heated element and then you have your, um, you'd have your other your cord for the DS. And now they're kind of they're combined. So you only have one car, cord that plugs into your sled and has the lights and the heated and everything. And so it is super cool. But I, wanna take, I want you to take us through that process of how the idea formed. Obviously, the idea is can be pretty simple i guess some people are always looking for a better helmet a heated visor that stays clear especially in the really cold conditions and fast conditions you guys are using them in and then um and then take us through that sort of test process and how it works six years yeah well it's it, you know it, it was a long time working on it um obviously when you look at and again from a trail application you look at the helmets that uh, BRP has developed over over the years, starting from really the modular helmet is when we really reinvented the snowmobile helmet, uh, and then and then it went to the BV2S, um, and uh, the oxygen kind of we 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 you know taking lessons learned over the modular and the BV2 and what competition was doing and even looking at motocross helmets et cetera you know um, uh, people felt constricted on their face with the mask. Um, people wanted more vision, uh, people wanted lighter helmets, you know, uh, back way back, you know, the heavier helmet didn't really matter, but with lighter technology, you know, that was a big thing. Um, and then obviously too, to, to have a product that, uh, doesn't fog up, um, and keeps you very warm. Uh, I'm just trying to think of all the different things we talked about, obviously too, uh, reducing noise. So that's how we ended up coming up with the, the earphones and stuff like that. So, you know, we, we, we really do a lot of research and, and listen to the consumers as far as current product that's out there. Uh, I think, a, you know, maybe a cool thing for myself is I ride a lot myself. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a true yellow blood enthusiast, so I put a lot of miles on myself, and there's a lot of things that were, say, frustrating to myself also using existing product. And from that, you know, just start writing a, a project uh, definition of uh, do's and don'ts. And then, uh, then we work with our, uh, our, our design team and our engineering team as a triad. And we're brainstorming and coming back and forth with uh, new ideas and challenge each other back and forth. And, and slowly but surely, we find our way to come out with a, you know, a really awesome product. Yeah, cool. Well, it's funny, Wilson Pruitt said, Andrew Munster, who... Uh, owns Munster products is an amazing guy an amazing uh, designer and builder uh, he tried the oxygen helmet at club this year and he he wants three of them for the parties that he throws in his office <laughs> oh, cool and that, that that that's a good um, that's a good recommendation that guy is uh, you know as you know engineers are always they're real thinkers it's just like when you're talking about the stuff that you do um, and that's what I love you know, all the people at BRP, they are out riding and they're riding a lot and not, there's always someone riding the way 
we anybody in the sport rides, but it's not in everybody's way all the time. But the biggest thing is the time and then coming up with those ideas. And that's why the product is so good. I mean, it's not just invented and, hey, maybe this will work. Um, it's coming from real riders, as you say, you know, the amount of time you spend on, on snow and, and you're, you, you see the value of, of what people need that even before we see it a lot of times. Yeah. Yeah. No, and that's the fun part about it too, is, is, is really understanding those needs of what the, what, what the market's asking for, but they don't even know that they're asking for it more or less. And it's dissecting, uh, you know, through the different comments and, and really listening. And, and again, being part of that, that community uh, ourselves out there riding and, and uh, sitting on the trailhead and just, just listening to people. And it doesn't really, it doesn't matter what brand you're on. Uh, you know, everyone's comments, uh, they're all great. And uh, from there, you know, uh, you can, uh, you can end up coming up with some pretty cool product because of it. Yeah, I would even say that some of the other brands, it's even more important to have their feedback feedback because, you know, if you if you really like Skidoo, then of course you're going to like a lot of the products. But if you're, you know, if you're a Polaris rider, Arctic Cat, well, especially if you're an Arctic Cat rider, there's no way you're running a yellow helmet um, unless it's the paint it spray paint it green. But but the good thing about those comments is they're going to tell you real comments, and they're and they're especially Arctic Cat riders, they're not afraid to, to tell you. Um, if they don't like it or whatever. And that only, only helps you, right? Yeah, no, absolutely. And if you, if you actually look at our, our modular and, and BV2 and even the oxygen, it is probably one of the biggest successes as far as a crossover product within the snowmobile industry out of any product out there. The number of people that you'll see on, on another brand that uh, is wearing a BRP helmet and that customer is going back to our BRP dealer is, is huge. So it's really cool too. Yeah, and we're, I think we're going to see that in the, the new Helium series of clothing. Uh, you know, we've produced an amazing uh, lineup in clothing, and it's only getting better. And the new Helium, which is non-branded Skidoo. So it's one of those things where now anybody could feel that they could uh, wear that really nice clothing without, you know, be, it being brand specific. So if they are riding another brand, and I, I think that's it is really important and and it's it's fun to watch that too right yeah no absolutely the uh yeah it, definitely the new helium line is is awesome uh and and of course the sympatex that we've had for years is uh once you ride with that it doesn't matter what what else you've ever ridden with it's such so superior of a product so yeah i think the new helium line will do great yeah so now we've talked about it being six years to bring sort of well you've been working on that oxygen so is it is that a good timeline? It's three to four years, maybe four years out. You're thinking about an idea. It takes a few uh, prototypes to even get a working model or then you're passing it around to the team or, or you're, you're, you're sort of setting on one design and then it's changing for those next two years to finally the product, seeing the product. It, you know, it really depends on uh, the technicality of the product. Um, uh, you know, it's a lot shorter if you're, if you're utilizing existing technologies that are already there on the market, maybe a different industry or something has it. Uh, a, a product like the Oxygen, there was a lot of different technology in it that didn't exist, that our engineering department was really able to create. Like we were, we were bringing ideas to the supplier base that they didn't know what to do or they didn't have any of that knowledge themselves. So we were pushing our suppliers a lot. Um, you know, the uh, M-Forge, the new product there, as far as the lightweight material that it's made from, that was new on the market, so not, not really well known. There's just endless things. So it really depends. You can, you can have something like a helmet like that that takes a significant uh, number of years to develop, and then, uh, you know, something else the guys are able to do in a year or two years. But I would say on average, it's, it's normal, more about two years with our accessories uh, that we're working on product ahead of time. Yeah, cool. Dustin Boyd just said he ran the uh, the BV2S helmet in Kane's Quest, and uh, okay. he said it was phenomenal. He actually asked me if I would join him on Kane's Quest, uh, which was a huge honor because um, I'd love to do that race. Uh, but I, I had to tell him right now it's just not in the cards with uh, home life and all the other stuff that, that um, I'm doing in the winter time. It just wouldn't be fair to sort of say yes unless I could put the time in that I'd probably need to even hang with with them and and make it an enjoyable for experience so may, maybe one day but that is really awesome that 
um, you know, people are really using it. And, and it doesn't also, when it comes out, it never means that the product's uh, perfect because I know that in the last those three years that the oxygen helmet has made some re also really cool improvements or had some accessories added to it that were easily um, adaptable to the year before helmet as well. Yeah. You know, whenever you come out with something new and you're pushing the limits, uh, there's always different things that could pop up from a supplier or product or whatever. But, uh, you know, the year after year, you know, the guys have done an amazing job to uh, continue to improve the product to even make it better. How do you go about choosing which products? Is it, um, I know all the, like the engineers and people that are, they have these products, they come to you, do they come to you and say, I got a really good idea. And uh, if there's 10 good ideas, they go into the fighting cage at BRP and then the, the top three come out and the other guys uh, go, go down to the lower rounds or how does, how does that work? <laughs> yeah, there's, we do have a ring set up in the office and, and uh, we all have to get into it and, and, and really the last man standing uh, determines the, uh, what the list is going to be. So no, it's uh it's, it's really, it's a combination uh, uh, you know, obviously within our group we got a we got a lot of great people and er everyone's so you know always coming up with ideas so basically i compile all of the ideas um i cost evaluate everything as far as uh you know retail pricing and and, and costs and margins and volume and, and stuff like that um and then uh from that too we we also look at you know is this going to make a difference in the market or are, are we going to uh uh, you know, set an example here with the product that we're coming out with. And, and uh, from that, uh, we, we pick, a, a, the, you know, a, a list that uh, we think is going to be uh, well received within the market. And obviously, you can't do everything. Um, and some projects take a lot more time than others. Um, but uh, we, we come together as a group and, 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 you know, design goes off and they start doing you know, their magic and coming out, even making our ideas even better and then engineering tweaks it and, and uh, some things get dropped along the ways and some things that weren't so high on the list all of a sudden shoot through the roof because it was like, oh my God, we never thought of that and, and, and now we have something really awesome. Has, has anybody ever cried that you didn't choose their product? <laughs> uh, uh, let's, be on let's be honest, Paul, you can throw someone under the bus. No, I don't. No, I think they're, I, for sure. <laughs> I think we've all been disappointed because it, not everyone always gets what they want. Uh, you know, there's been lots of projects that I wanted and uh, I got rejected. And hey, that happens. That's, that's all part of it. But it, it challenges you more to, to continue to think out of the box to come out with something even cooler. And uh, so, no, it's I, I, I don't I don't remember anyone crying over a project that was lost, but some disappointed people for sure. Well, I, I think you're lying because when my four-year-old is upset when she doesn't get uh, to go right on the back here, uh, she lies down on the floor and simultaneously, I don't know how she does it, she can actually pound her hands and her feet. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I've been there. I, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> That's awesome. So um, I'll tell you one of my favorite accessories this year. I, I, I'll tell you, it's an accessory that, I don't know if I'll need it that often, but I absolutely love it. And I know the guys who, who will or, or will appreciate it, will love it as well, is that's the, that's the, uh, the new toolkit. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I think it's, what's so cool about it is um, it's just how small it is. And it's not that heavy. And then, but what is included in it? Yeah. No, it's, uh, you know, when, you, when you're out on the trail and uh, whether it's yourself that needs some, something or someone else needs help and you need to help someone else, uh, you know, having tools with you is, is a great thing. And, you know, I ride a lot and probably one of the worst things I do as a rider, I'm guilty of it. The last thing I think about is, I guess I'm so excited to get on the trail. The last thing I, I think about is making up that yearly toolkit of all the little special things that I need. And, Obviously, riding on the trail is a little bit different than riding out in the mountains. We're not uh, as remote, for sure. But, uh, yeah, I got, I got the, the toolkit this year. I ran with it this year in my sled. And I tell you, I, I love to tinker, too. I'm always playing with clutches and suspension and trying different things. And uh, I, I had that thing out on the back of the seat all of the time. It was, you know, just so handy. And I added a few extra little things in there. But, uh, yeah, the size of it and 
all of the tools and how they're all, uh, you know, the, the, the different sizes per the end and how they've, they've made it as small as possible. Uh, the guys did a really cool job on it. I, I think there should be uh, one addition that would be, uh, I would love to see in that toolkit. Oh, I already um, got that. I already got that. You do? Yeah, those, uh, the, those, the, the green sunglasses. <laughs> that, that, that's, that's one of them. Okay. But the other one is, and I, I have to say this importantly, is uh, I never drink when I ride. I always drink when I'm finished riding in the evening yep. if I'm out riding. But I think it's really cool to have a, a little opener in there that says only use after riding that slides into the pouch and then you could when you bring your toolkit into the bar right yeah. um and you know where they got where they got that other brand sled in there and they like it's on its side and they're trying to get you know work on it then you could bring yeah. it in there and then you're like hey guys you need this tool right here but let me let me also just get this tool out and we'll have a beer and talk about it <laughs> yeah well we can we can think about it we can talk about it in our next uh in our next meeting on uh, new products for sure I love it. And so how is this affecting what's going on right now? How is that affecting uh, your work, parts and accessories for 2022 it'll be? 2022 or are you talking 2021? We're still or 2021. I mean, well, 2021 is kind of done, right? I mean, there'll be an, is there going to be a, do you see an effect with uh, production, things like that? Um. You know, I don't, I don't, obviously I don't know everything going on, but I can tell you from an accessory point of view that we're, that's the daily topic is model year 2021. Uh, obviously the procurement team is, is working as hard as they can with the various suppliers all over the world and trying to get product in. And we're making, we're, unfortunately too, we're having to make some tough calls on if we keep some of the product. Um, but, uh, you know, overall, the team's working hard to do their best to, to make sure we have a, have another great season with all the product that we promised uh, coming up this fall. Yeah. I, one thing I know about BRP is that uh, come hell or high water, it'll be there. You'll, you know, there'll be a way there's always, there's no, never really no. It's always, a, we'll take this way and it'll happen here and we'll make it happen. Yeah. That's usually the attitude for sure. Yeah, that's awesome. So I'm going to do a little bit of a quick quiz here for you, because just to, just to get to people know a little bit about you. Um, uh, do you prefer snow, dirt, or road? Snow. Twelve Baseball months a year. Or hockey. Sorry. Twelve months a year. Twelve. Snow. You want twelve months a year? I like it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, baseball or hockey? Uh, I'd have to go hockey. French toast or pancakes? Uh, French toast. Pickup truck or electric car? Uh, pickup truck all the way, buddy. <laughs> hey, careful, buddy. I, just got... <laughs> I know, but that's not a car. <laughs> I love it. Uh, how many accessories are there in the line? You have five seconds. In ski do. Over 2,000. Oh, 2,000, guys. That's unbelievable. Um I think I had another here one. Uh, hey, let's get into this. One of, one of the things I wanted to ask you, what's your favorite uh, show of the year? Pre show? show of... Yeah, the show of the year for when we talk about sledding. Heydays. Yeah, and, and why do you love it? Uh, you know, because you've, you've been off your sled, and, and even though we, you know, at work we're talking snowmobiles all, every day, but uh, you're, 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 it's the – it's it's really as the as the snow barons say it's the kickoff of winter um so you know just the the thou the 50 50 60 whatever thousand people that that attend uh all the vendors are there anyone who's anybody in the snowmobile business is there uh dealers suppliers friends uh it's just a good old time and 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 it's really the first time uh, other than spring that uh, you get to really meet again with uh, with, ever, with the enthusiasts and, and talk product and, uh, you know, talk about plans for this winter. And, yeah, just heydays, heydays for me, for sure, hands down, is, is my event to go to. Well, and I also know your son loves heydays. And you, he's always, I know exactly what you were like as a kid, which you kind of still are like, is the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. But he's always over in the, uh, in the swap meet coming back with stuff that, 
you know, he, he, he's a, he's a magnet finder. He finds those good deals, brings them back. And, you know, most of us are like, wow, I wish I found that, but he's got a really good knack for it. And I know he gets that from you. And, um, and it's really cool to see that, right? Because you would be over there all day as well. Oh, I, I wish I could spend more time over there. And yeah, my son, Jacob, he's a, he's a, he's a, he's a wheeler dealer and he, he's, he can, he can sniff those deals out and uh, he, he, he's bought a lot of stuff there and sold a lot of stuff and rebuilt a lot of stuff. So it's fun. It's been, it's been fun watching Jacob as far as, uh, uh, you know, especially at heydays and in the swap meet for sure. Yeah. And I will tell people if you haven't been to heydays and even if you have, but you haven't come into our booth and really experienced, explored everything. That's the cool thing is you get to talk to the service techs who are literally the front lines and the people in the back, like just that know literally not only about that current year, but you know, they're all, they're like guys like you who have been snowmobiling their whole life. And they know they probably had every model that you've had. And, um, and you get to talk to them. And then, you you know, again, you get to talk to guys like Paul on the parts and accessories side, and you can ask them those questions. I mean, this is, you know, heydays is something special. I don't see it in any other, any other sport. I, I've been to uh, Super Sand uh, Sports Show down in yeah, California, Sand. which is the equivalent for, for uh, off-road. And it's, it's really cool. But it isn't heydays. I, I, don't, I don't know what's... You know, maybe it's just because of where it, where Heydays is located. Uh, the, the people watching, the the people you meet, everybody's absolutely jazzed. And you think about it, right? It's in the middle of a bunch of farmers' fields, and they've yeah. literally sold these these sections to to the manufacturers, and then all everybody comes. So if you haven't been, you make the trip. It's just and take the time to go through everything. And it is you get to talk to people that you just would normally not be able to talk to or be very difficult to talk to and uh and ask them all sorts of questions that's why it's so great to have you there paul and and um you know that's why i think people you know why our sport is so cool is we're so passionate that we want to be right in there in the front lines talking to the service techs and talking to the people who are creating this stuff who are coming up with it and then making it happen right so i think that's the best part no, absolutely. When you really think about it, like you said, you got a, a, what, a thousand acre farm field there uh, attracting tens of thousands of people with all the same passion. And, and it's just a good old time and just a ton of fun, too. So, yeah. And another time, another place I know Heydays is, is the top uh, cream of the crop. But I know another place that I think you really like and I, I can see the smile on your face when I there is club and club for people who don't know. Skidoo Club is where we release the next year. So we just had it in Cancun this year in February, and it's where we show all our dealers so they get to see it uh, first, all the new parts and accessories and sleds, and they, they get to see everything first. And we do we broadcast it live now. and We do a live Facebook show. And so we really try to bring everybody along the way. And I, I, I really, you know, not on the TV part of it or Facebook side, but I do really like walking around the showroom. And then when I see you, it's like the smile on your face just couldn't be bigger. And <laughs> like all the minions, I call them, right? Because everybody's sort of an equal at BRP, but they're, I, everybody's like a little minion. They all are running around and trying to help dealers and let people know. And if you have any questions, man, they either know the answer or they're going to find someone uh, who knows the answer. And it's kind of fun to watch you sort of be around that because that's your time to shine of when everything's going. And everybody's like, wow, this is going to be awesome. And people are going to buy this or I don't see the market in our area for this, but boy, are they going to love that. And there's something for everybody in there. Yeah. Now clubs are always very special. Obviously it's the cool part for us and our team as far as, uh, you know, introducing something that we've been working on for years. So it's finally like uh, showing off your baby. Uh, and uh, so a lot of fun that way, obviously the energy and everything that's around it and, you know, even even yourself, Dave, what you've done for our clubs over the years and the, the, the excitement and on Instagram and the live feeds that you're doing and stuff and getting people involved has been really cool. Um, obviously, for me, too, as, as I have a lot of dealer friends, you know, dealers that I've, I've met uh, on the road over the years all through North America and being able to see them and uh, just just chat. Uh, a lot of times we don't even chat business. It's It's family and how things are going and the riding that they got to do this year, where they rode and stuff like that. So just being able to get together with the, with the dealer network and, and old friends is, is a lot of fun also. 
Yeah, I will say that too, as through the years, I've just gotten to know more and more dealers and they've been so gracious in, you know, coming up and introducing themselves because it's really hard to know every dealer because there are so many. And, and uh, man, again, it's like heydays, right? That the, 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 just the passion from all these dealers, you have to remember to become a dealer is, is uh, it's a big deal and, and it's not easy by any stretch of the imagination. And uh it's like it it can only be done through passion and hard work it it's not just like hey i'm going to have a deal this is going to be fun i'm going to get to ride my snowmobile all the time because that's that last part slowly becomes less and less as they focus on their customer base and having to deal with things and ordering and figuring out what people need and taking care of service and all that it becomes it can become a job quite quickly so one of the big things too, and I'm sure you concur on this, is uh, we really need to thank our dealers, especially at this time, because it's it, it is a huge challenge for everybody, but also our dealers. So to all those um, budding enthusiasts out there, you know, take the time with your dealer. What you can, the best thing you can do now is be going through catalogs and looking at what you what what, what you want for next year. And I would say get in early, make a list, and um, and then you're on the first you're in the first batch that comes into the dealer. And, um, and, and really support them because they're going to need their, your support. And, and, and that goes for everybody. The dealers get the support and then they can support the economy and whatever job you have in that economy, this is what we've got to do, right? We've got to really get out there and, um, and, and, and really um, get people, you know, going as, as this, as we get back to work when we do, um, that we need to support everybody. And I, 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 that's how we support everybody right now with a smile. And, you know, I think that's why that rev for support is so important. It's, a, it's about having that. We always have a cheery face at BRP. I know you, you see the fight, the infighting a lot more in the, in the ring and the ultimate ring of uh, fighter. I think every department has one at BRP. I've only seen a few of them because I don't have locks. To, I don't have a card for all the doors, but um, <laughs> I think, I think it's really important that that's what you see. That's where BRP uh, DNA comes from and I think we can all um, we can all be a little bit better at that for sure yeah for sure and Dave one of the, your earlier things when you were talking about the dealers and supporting the dealers and stuff like that you know right now the dealers are in the process of of having to book uh, say their accessories their clothing well their clothing's done but their accessories uh, for delivery come this fall uh, so yeah, no, it's a great point. If 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 anyone out there is 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 thinking about a new accessory that uh, they'd like to have, uh, you know, they should think of calling their dealer and, and letting them know because it it helps guide them too as far as really what they're going to need to stock for the year, and the chances of the dealer getting it on their initial order that's happening right now uh, really reserves the chance that you're going to get that product come this fall and it won't be back ordered. Uh, and, and it just helps it helps support the dealer and in, 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 in making sure he's buying the right product and, and not stocking something that he doesn't necessarily need. Yeah, this is a this is definitely a time for that of uh, dealers aren't just going to order everything. They need to know the, 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 the stuff that they that people really want. So they order that and don't have things sitting on their shelf. This is, you know, anytime, you know, this is kind of an equivalent to like, a you know, a recession. It's kind of a reset where you kind of go. I don't need this and I don't need that, but I really need this. Well, let those dealers know now. And, um, and then, and then you're on the front line, like first in line when you do get it. But also, like you said, I think it's so good. It helps the dealers organize so that they, they're going to get their things that are going to bring in money, not sit on their shelf all season. Right. Cause that just costs the money. So exactly. I, I really, I really love, love that point. Hey, uh, I want to change it up a little bit. Uh, can you explain to me what the Blendster is? <laughs> the Blendster? The Blendster, hey, before, yeah. Before you, before you go on, did you guys hear that little laugh? If you, it, you know, that's the laugh I'm talking about, right? It's like, that could have been, that's the laugh of someone saying it could have been so much bigger and better, but I'll tell you about it. And this is, so you go ahead. Yeah. Well, there's been there's. Uh, it, I was wondering what Blendster you were talking about because I think there's been uh, ten, ten, ten different versions of it over the years. But uh, uh, at our dealer meeting, it uh, it started out as uh, I believe the first one was a chainsaw with a blender mounted on the end of it and uh, with an open mod pipe. And anyways, amongst the thousands of dealers, uh, we'd go and and fire the blender up and make a lot of noise and make a lot of smoke and and uh, mix margaritas for everyone and they were they were pretty potent margaritas but uh over the years it, it changed uh you know mock z the three-cylinder engines triple pipes uh 
Uh, and then the last one that we had, uh, I actually, I worked on it with a friend of mine and uh, we had a, it was an XP that uh, had the industrial blenders mounted on the back of the tunnel, but you could still drive the snowmobile. Uh, it was set up all hydraulically and you could drive the sled, drive it into the party and then switch it over to the blender mode with the open pipes and we'd mix margaritas all night long. So it was a good, uh, good party that we had there. <laughs> yeah, that is, that is awesome. And uh, yeah, it, you know, things I wouldn't, they haven't slowed down, but it's just, uh, it, it, I'll tell someone a little bit of a story I give back in the day, uh, you know, for BRP to have a club somewhere, it's like any big organization. It's, it, it's a lot of value to in a hotel chain to have them. And so they would often sign them like, Hey, we'll have you back here for three years in a row. And we'll give you this sort of rate. And I remember one year after they had us for the first year, they're like, we don't ever want you back. <laughs> <laughs> so uh the parties can be pretty intense but we've we've uh we've we've we, we're all we're a little more professional now right paul we, we we tone it down a bit yeah they're 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 not the same as they were but uh they're all good still they're all good and uh hey uh have you ever crashed a sled while testing gear uh i've had a couple incidents but uh yeah no i've uh that that I've tested product that sounds as coy as Tony Jenkins and Carl Kuster, who both destroyed uh, prototypes. Mm -hmm. now, I've never destroyed a prototype. I've never destroyed a <laughs> prototype. Uh, so what's your best memory on a sled? Oh, I, you know what? I, there's so, there's so many, you know, uh, uh, I've had a ton of snowmobiles. I think I've had, I think I'm up over a hundred snowmobiles that I've had between, uh, you know, new ones and my vintage, the vintage ones that I have, but, uh, uh, I don't know. I think it's not, it's not necessarily one sled. I've had a ton of cool sleds, high horsepower ones, uh, really trick sleds, uh, water sleds. Um, you know, but the, uh, I think the biggest thing is just, I've been very fortunate on all the different areas I could ride. So whether it's uh, Vermont or Maine, uh, New Hampshire, Quebec, Ontario, Minnesota, Wisconsin, the Rockies, whether it's in BC or Colorado, and uh, just really being able to ride all, all over and, and experience all the different things. You know, trail riding is totally different than off-trail riding, which is totally different than mountain riding or, or, or even a utility application. And uh, you know, just trying the vehicles in all the different uh, worlds. And, and the, the one cool thing is it doesn't matter what type of snowmobile you're on or what state or province you're in or country you're in. Uh, there's all that passion uh, that everyone has about it. And to me, that's the fun part about it. And whether you're razzing a buddy or, uh, but at the end of the night, you're all together and you're all having a good time and, and uh, you, you know, talking it up and, that that's to me is 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 the whole family and and everything that it's all about. Yeah, very cool. I would agree a hundred percent. Hey, what do you think of our ambassador team that we have, and how uh, do you think we do it uh, at uh, club and throughout the year on the parts and accessories? And where do you think we can improve? And I'm asking you this question because we get a lot of people all the time that want to be sponsored or want to be an ambassador of whatever brand, and and I always tell them like. You know, athletes, like I'm pretty hard on athletes because I've been one my whole life um, working with sponsors. And, and I always I say, hey, man, you always ask the boss what they want, right? Because if I come to work as you as an engineer, there's a list of what you need for me and what I can do. And there might be some things I can't do, but I can learn. And there's some things that you know I don't can't do, but will learn. Um, like, that's why I ask that question. So maybe uh, sort of put it in a way that how it could help um, you know, young, younger aspiring uh, riders and how they could work with a manufacturer and even someone like yourself and what they could do. What do you kind of expect and where do you think the, the, the best, uh, you know, what expectation do you have and where do you see that could be improved upon? Yeah. Well, you know, the ambassador program to me has been, has been really cool. Um, you know, and this really only started a few years ago. Like it's, it hasn't been around for 20 years. Uh, so new concept. Um, I, I really love the diversity that we have with the people. You don't have to be a certain, you know, fit in a certain clone. 
uh, when you look at the, 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 all of you guys out there, from yourself to Ashley to Carl, uh, uh, everyone, everyone's different. And, and uh, they all have a different perspective on it, uh, the, you, you know, and they're all doing different things uh, to help promote the product. Uh, but, uh, uh, you know, as far as what you guys are doing for me, uh, you know, it's a combination of things. Obviously, you're, you're, you're updating your sleds with the newest accessories, uh, helping promoting them and, and getting to use them. Um, and, and, you know, at the same time, too, you're getting certain products that are, not released yet to, to try and, and I'm always looking for feedback that way too to uh, you know ultimately make our products better um, but I think it's uh, you got to get out there you you, you got to be positive and, and uh, uh, you, you know uh, uh, the posts that happen and, and uh, it's not about bashing anyone else or anything like that it's it's being honest and, and having a good time and and uh, really supporting our brands and uh, to me, that's what uh, that's what makes a, a great ambassador. And you know, again, just the ability to not only talk over uh, by sending uh, putting out a post out there, but to be able to be that uh, that leader in the group uh, who makes a difference and and uh, you know supportive and can help people out. And and uh, if they don't know the answer, uh, don't make up the answer. Uh, you know, but they'll find it for you. You know, they'll they'll be out there to trying to get you know help support you that way. So. Um, you know, those are, I guess those are the, the key points for, for myself. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm honored to be a part of this team uh, because there's so many, uh, just the mate, well, everybody on the team is amazing. And what I, I do agree with you and I love about the team is everybody is totally different. Uh, there's no cookie cutter to, to, to working with a company like ski do. It's literally, um, and you don't, you don't have to try too hard. In fact, trying too hard is almost the worst thing you can do because yeah. uh, it has to come from your heart. It, and it, it's interesting, right? I, I do a lot, of, as you know, I do a lot of videos. Anybody who's seen some of the videos, I do a, basically I try to cover all the parts and accessories I can uh, when I'm at club. And, uh, you know, I, I cover this, a lot of the stuff that I absolutely love. So it's really easy to talk about it because there's so many cool things. And um, if there's something I don't like or I wouldn't use, I just usually don't do a video about it unless people really want to see it. And, and generally that might be if I'm a mountain guy, then, you know, I'm not going to go through the main gauge of the trail segment. I'll let Rob and, and Jeff do that because they'll do a way better job than me because they have the background in that. But um, I love doing it. And I've had lots of comments. Well, I used to have a lot of comments like, oh, you're telling me I need all this stuff. And I said, whoa, whoa, whoa. It's, I've never <laughs> said that you need it. I'm just showing you what's available and then you get to choose w with your hard earned money because my passion is in reminding people to have fun. And I'm not always, a lot of times I take the cheaper, uh, I don't want to say cheaper, less expensive uh, coat or piece of accessory. Like a perfect example would be the rigid toe holds over the, um, the adjustable ones. And I yep. like the rigid ones because they do everything for me and they're cheaper. And mm -hmm. so it's easy for me to go, oh, yeah, get these ones at $290 when you can really get these ones at 90 And then if you feel like you want more adjustability and you want to feel like you're a real fiddler and you need to have the perfect, then you'll spend the money. And that's I, I, what I, my passion about really is I want people to buy things once. We've all had an experience where we went and bought a bike and you like the better bike and you like the color or you like, even if it was as silly as the color, right? And people don't do it. They'll go down. And women are the worst at this. And I mean that in the best way that they'll generally, a guy will always go, I want the best. And women usually who should have the best usually will go, oh, I'll just get the one down. And the problem with that is at, then their experience isn't as fun when they're out there. Yeah. And, and it's not to say you always need the most expensive thing. And then in lots of cases, it's the most expensive one is just got all the bells and whistles. And a lot of them, they're just more wants than needs. And you can save a lot of money by, by figuring that out. And I think that's a, a big, you know, what I love to do anyway. There's nothing worse when you buy a bike and then you go, I wish I got the other one. Now you got to sell it. You lose the tax and money. And then you got to go buy the new one and tax. Yeah. That's, a, that's a way worse thing. So I, I think that's a really, um, I think we're all like that on the team. We're not like uh, spoiled. We feel we're spoiled, but we're not spoiled in the sense yeah. that we just get things haphazardly i mean you would know how many people phone you for stuff i mean the only time i call you is if something that i am in dire need of and that those calls don't happen very often yeah no for sure 
And, and going to what you were saying, you know, uh, you don't always have to have the most expensive accessory to, to, to make your ride better. And even, even with the vehicle itself too, like, uh, you know, not, not everyone needs a, a turbo or not everyone needs an XRS. They'd actually, they'd actually have more fun on a TNT uh, because of say they're newer to the sport. And, uh, you know, and, and too, from an ambassador point of view, it's, 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 uh, uh, you, you know, helping, helping direct the, the consumer in the right direction uh, on what's going to best suit them. And obviously they can have the end, end choice, but, you know, telling them the do's and don'ts and, and, and why you're thinking the way that you're doing. But uh, uh, no, absolutely. I think you're on the right track there. Um, I have, uh, where do you think the, uh, where do you see accessories going in the next five years? Um. <laughs> There's there well, you, you, I think the biggest thing is 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 uh, more integration, uh, less install time, uh, more uh, products that that provide uh, you know more benefits to the consumer. Uh, you know I, I I see bigger and more things related to Link. Uh, Link has been absolutely awesome, um, and and, and and what it can do and and uh, you know with Link you're offering a complete system versus. Uh, you know, piecemeal of a whole bunch of different things, trying to stick it on and, and integrate it into the vehicle. And, you know, so uh, a lot more link type products, uh, maybe evolution of it, who knows. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, somewhere along those lines. Yeah, I mean, I, I get to, you know, hit sea dues and Can-Am off-road and ski do, And it is really cool to see how that link system is crossed over. Uh, I think because it originally came from Can-Am, am I correct? Yeah, the what was it? Second generation of the Outlander uh, is what it came on, and the uh, with the racking system, and then it, yeah. it migrated into Skidoo, and then you know across all. It's now across all brands, but for sure, if you're a multi-brand owner and, and the ability to have a gas can and and use it on all of your power sports or a cooler or whatever you want, and uh, uh, you know it's uh, truly truly really cool that. Uh, it, it, the system that the guys came up with and, and how we can use it across our entire portfolio. Yeah. And I like what uh, Dustin says here. The link is almost as relevant as the introduction of the original rev chassis. So that's saying something, right? That's because... a cool. Uh, uh, yeah. My, uh, my team would like that comment for sure. For sure. Yeah. I mean, it, it literally has changed how we put things on snowmobiles and sea dues and uh, can-am off-road on-road. Um, and it, it is, like you said, it's, it's cross-pollination of, of using, you know, like you say, a fuel caddy, uh, uh, the cooler, all that sort of stuff. Really, it, it, it's, it's super cool. And, and it's easy to install and it's quick to take off or put on. And I, I, I absolutely think it's rad. That sleigh that you had at, uh, at club this year was pretty amazing. I've never seen so many links on, the, uh, on something and so many available places for things like bags and chainsaws and all this axes yeah. and it, it's very very cool yeah i can't believe you slept in it that one night <laughs> hey dude <laughs> uh, I, i'm always thinking i'm always budget con uh conscious and and on that note the last question is uh how many days have you spent consecutively living out of link bags living out of link bags like like sold out <laughs> no living out of them like you're oh. on the road Oh, traveling because yeah, no. i know you like to get out on the on the spider and uh, you're living out of that bag for a long time yeah, I, i've uh I, I have one with me all the time it's uh yeah it's a it's a commodity as far as all the travel and uh riding etc so yeah quite a I, bit i love it i love that your briefcase is a link bag <laughs> there's yeah. there's no, there's there's nothing cooler than that no and anybody could have a really expensive leather sachet uh, briefcase, but uh, to have a link system, that really matters. Hey, uh, I want to thank you, Paul, so much for joining us. It's been super informative, and it's always a pleasure to get to chat with you. I hope you have an awesome summer, and I can't wait to see you at Heydays. Yeah, likewise, Dave, and keep in touch. If you need something, let me know. I can, okay, uh, help, I I can help you with that new bike. Uh, I, I love it. I want to put links all over that thing. Okay. Um, okay. I I, I want to thank you again, and I want to thank everybody for joining us tonight. And really, take care, everybody. Make sure you uh, cheer on your buddies, your friends, and throw a smile at all those strangers you see if you're uh, outside or even inside or online. And uh, let's keep uh, let's keep rocking, and we'll be uh, we'll be out of this soon.
All right. Good to see you, Dave. Yeah, Thanks, everyone, for you. joining. Take care, everybody.